Hello, welcome to this video where we look at Taylor series and then we go in deeper and look at what's called a McLaren series. So the setting is that we're in calculus two class and we're talking about power series already, but we want to be able to calculate the power or find the representation, the power series representation of, of a function that isn't one that comes from the geometric series. Just a general, here, here's an f of x. Um, how do you find the power series representation for that f of x? And so um, we had said that, well, there's a certain form that it takes. We have coefficients and we have powers uh, of x minus a. So we have a c sub 0, and then a c sub 1 times x minus a, a c sub 2 times x minus a squared, and so on forever. And the function is going to be equal to this series. It is the sum of this series. So long as the series converges, so you got to make sure you're in the interval of convergence, where capital R is the radius of convergence. All right, great. So we have these coefficients. How do you find these coefficients? Because that's the only thing that really makes up the series. We, have, we know what the terms x minus a are going to be. So it's all about what are the coefficients. So in these next couple slides, we look at how to figure it out without me just telling you what it is. We'll go through the process. It's not official proof or anything like that, but we're just going to discover why the coefficients are what they are. We're going to make a guess. We're going to get it wrong, but in the end, we'll get it right. So how are you going to do this? Well, my job is to find C0, C1, C2, C3 forever. Find all of them. Let's start with C0. You got to start someplace, right? So how are you going to find out what C0 is? Looking closely at the series, if you were to plug in x equals a, then the term with C1 in it, the term with C2 in it, the term with C3 in it, and every term with a higher power on um, x minus a will, will go away. It would be like a minus a. Those parts will zero out. And so if these two things are equal to each other, if you plug in a to the right hand side, you should also plug in a to the left hand side. So let's do it. We have f of a should be equal to your constant term c sub zero. Oh, that was easy enough. Not bad. And we want this to keep happening because next we want to find c1. And so the key to this was that c sub zero didn't have an x minus a term on it. So how can we get c sub 1 not to have an x minus a term on it? And take the derivative. The c sub 0 term is going to go away. And then c sub 1, the derivative of this function, c sub 1 um, would have just, a, it would just be c sub 1 as the constant term. c sub 2 would still have an x minus a on it. Let's go ahead and take this derivative. So we're looking at this term c sub 1 quantity x minus a at the top of the slide there. Its derivative is just c sub 1. If you want to, you can distribute and try to figure out why it is for yourself, but it's c1x minus c1a, and, and, and c1a has a zero derivative, so c1x has a derivative of c1. Okay, when it comes to the, the c sub 2 term, though, that's x minus a quantity squared, so you have to bring down the 2 and take it to the 1. You're still going to have that x minus a term. For the c3 term, you're going to have to bring down the 3 and take it to the squared term. So, and so on. I don't have the fourth one on the, on the top line, but here's the fourth guy there. And so, now we can plug in a to zero out all the c sub 2, c sub 3, and c sub 4 in higher terms, just like we did before. And it turns out that then we can also plug that a into the left-hand side, and we get that f prime of a is c sub 1. We're doing great. If f of a is c sub 0 and, and f prime of a is the c sub 1, make a guess and you would say f double prime of a should be c sub 2. It's a wrong guess, but it's a good, you know, that's okay. And so let's look at why. We're going to do it again, right? Take a second derivative. Now, remember where we're at. We're at this point where we have, um, let me turn my, uh, pointer on here. Now we're at this point here where we have f prime of x is equal to this line here and we're going to take its derivative. Okay. So c sub 1 is going to go away. 
And then look at this term here, it's c sub two or two c sub two times x has a derivative of two c sub two. This other part, two c sub two times a negative a, it has a zero derivative. It's all constant. And then here we go with this term again, the two comes down and x minus a is to the one, the three comes down, the x minus a is to the two. And so that's where we're at. Um, get rid of that. Uh, okay, great. So second derivative is going to be 2c sub 2, 2 times 3, c sub 3x, quantity x minus a, 3 times 4, c sub 4, quantity x minus a squared, and so on. Much more terms there, infinitely many more terms. We're only looking at the first few, but we're going to do the same thing. We're going to plug in x equals a so that those terms go to zero leaving us not with c sub 2 like we had made in our guess no it leaves us with c 2c sub 2 should be the derivative the second derivative sorry um at a and if 2c sub 2 is the second derivative at a what does that make c sub 2 second derivative at a divided by 2 okay so could, could c sub 3 be the third derivative of a divided by 3? Nah, not quite. Let's see what it is. c sub 3 is going to be... All right, we're back up to the first line at the top of the screen. Take another derivative. 2 c sub 2 goes away. And see, the coefficient on c sub 3 is a, is a 6. It's a 2 times 3. When you multiply that by the x, that's going to be your derivative. 2 times 3 times c sub 3. The term with the um, x minus a squared at the top of line there. Bring down the 2. You got a 2 times 3 times 4. C sub 4. Times the quantity of x minus a. Next term would have been a 3, 4, 5. C sub 5. X minus a squared. And we can write this in general. I'm, I'm, I'm only writing the first few terms out. But hopefully it's enough for you to see what's going on. And so when you plug in x equals a. Yeah, those guys zero out. But... It gives you the third derivative at a is now I can call it six for sure, but I don't want you to lose sight of what's going on. Um, I want to write it as two times three on purpose. Can you see what the next guy is going to be? It's going to be two times three times four. And the next guy, when we take a derivative, is going to be two times three times four times five. And hopefully that that will be um, something that you could recognize. Because that's what we need. We need the formula in general. We don't want to keep doing this. And so we're there. We made some wrong guesses along the way, but we're there. And so the generic coefficient c sub n can be found by taking the nth derivative at a. <clears throat> and that denominator there is n factorial. Great job. All right, let's put it all together. Wrap a bow around it and uh, be able to now look at using this uh, concept. So Taylor series is what we're trying to find, centered at x minus a, and we want the, the representation of a, of a function. We want, the, we want the power series representation of a function f of x. We can do it so long as, you know, we can take all these derivatives, of course, and so, um, we have the coefficients in hand now, where, where I used to have a c sub n inside the summation. Now I have the nth derivative at a divided by n factorial. The parentheses up in the exponent spot next to the letter name of a function, that tells you which derivative you're taking. Because after a while, you don't want to keep using prime symbols. So this parentheses exponent position is, is the derivative, the nth derivative. And so the zeroth derivative is the function and the first derivative, second derivative, and so on. Zero factorial is defined to be one. So that formulas like this can work out. Okay, so that's it. Taylor series of a function centered at a. Any generic place on uh, x equals a. But most of the series that we're going to deal with have a equal to zero, centered at zero. It simplifies the, the, uh, the writing up of it nicely because instead of having x minus a to the n, you're just going to have x to the n. And instead of plugging in a's, you're just going to be plugging in zeros, and we love to plug in zeros. It has a different name, though. 
it's a subset. It's a smaller. It's a smaller um, subset of the uh, larger set of Taylor series, and it gets a different name. It's called the McLaren series when you're centered at zero. But the formula still works the same. M derivative, but now evaluated at zero, and then divided by n factorial. So you did it. Let's go ahead now and end this video. Uh, we will then, in subsequent videos, be able to look at examples and be able to, you know, you give me a function, I'll be able to use this to then calculate the power series representation of that function, and we'll look at applications and why we want to do this. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this Calc 2 journey. We're nearing the end of the journey, and so you want to finish strong. Um, if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask. Uh, comment down below, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video for sure. Take care.